When it comes to writing out the electron configuration of an element or ion, it's important to reimagine the periodic table as looking like this. Now remember, we have our S, P, D, and F sublevels. Now S has one orbital, which means it can hold up to two electrons. So that's why with the S block, which we call this, we have two slots because S can hold up to two electrons. So this moves over to that side. With P, we have three orbitals. So that means we have a potential of up to six electrons that P can hold. So that's why this is the P block. Then the D block here has 10 slots because D can hold up to 10 electrons. And then F can hold up to 14. It's important to visualize the periodic table as looking like this. And look at how the numbers change and the letters change. How we go from 4s and it drops down to 3d. Here we go 6s. And then here we drop down to 4f, this row. And then we come back up here to finish 5d. Now when we're doing the electron configuration of an element or ion, it's important to remember three common definitions. We have the off bow principle, Pauli exclusion principle, and Hund's rule. The off bow principle basically says we totally fill in the lowest energy level before moving to the next. So that means we'd go 1s2 before we go to 2s2 before we go to 2p6. Off bow is German for build up, so you wouldn't just skip 2s, you'd have to go 1s, then to 2s, then to 2p. The Pauli exclusion principle says no two electrons can have the same four quantum numbers. Basically what that says in, is that in an orbital we have two electrons. One spinning up and the other one has to spin down. In that way they have different spin quantum numbers. The one spinning up would be plus one half and the one spinning down would be minus one half. Finally, Hund's rule. Hund's rule says that electrons that are of same energy or degenerate are first half filled before being totally filled. So if you had 2p4, that would mean that you have four electrons. P has three orbitals. Since they're all 2p, you'd half fill first. Up, 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 and that fourth electron would have to come down. Knowing this will help us to determine the electron configuration of sodium and chromium. So if we take a look here, we have sodium right here. So we're going to just count to sodium. We're going to say that is 1s2, 1, 2, 2s2, 3, um, 2p, 6, because we count all the way through, and then 3s1, lands us right there. And if we have to fill that out, that'd be 1 up, 1 down, 1 up, 1 down, up, 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 since they're all 2p, Hund's rule, down, 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 and then one more for 3s. Then, if we want to do chromium, chromium is right here. Now look at chromium. We'd say, if we wanted to do the condensed, instead of writing it all the way from 1s and counting towards it, we can say, what's the last noble gas I pass before I get to chromium? That'd be argon. And then it would look like it is 4s2, 3d4. But here's the thing, a neutral element cannot end with d4 or d9. So again, a neutral element cannot end with d4 or d9, which means that this row here and this row here, they cannot be allowed to end with d4 or d9. So what happens here is we take one from the s and toss it over to the d, because d is most stable when it's half filled or totally filled. So that'd be one up, and then we'd have five here that are all pointing up. So just remember, these are basic types of electron configurations that we use by utilizing the periodic table setup on the left. And again, there are exceptions. Neutral elements cannot end with D4 or D9. What we do instead is we take one from the S orbital and hand it over to the D orbital in order to make a more stable element.